Hey, it's me, Andrea Reynolds, aka The Social Studies Whisperer. I'm a native Atlanta and currently living in Asheville, North Carolina. I did this whole woo-woo, follow your heart, relocating thing this summer. It's been quite an adjustment and apparently I can't watch any TV show that takes place in Atlanta or else the waterworks are released. And yesterday it was Flip or Flop Atlanta, so that's why I'm bringing you my show today. I'm determined to share with you my history nerdiness. This week, I bring you episode 8 of my weekly top hit show and companion historical happenings blog post, which you can find a link to in the show's description. What's a top hit, you ask? Well, three historical events that occurred this week so that you can plan ahead to somehow incorporate them in your instruction. These helpful ideas integrate literacy, technology, and support a wide range of learners. From what I've seen, social studies doesn't seem to be at the forefront of education at all. Am I right? So what's a teacher to do? Integrate literacy, of course, but also use those little pockets of time whenever you can to incorporate more social studies. My solution will be these little quick tidbits. Bus call, line up for recess, transitions. You've got a spare five minutes here and there. I'm going out of my way to share lesser known fun facts because you never know what might spark an interest in your students. The week of October 15th brings us two iconic 80s happenings with the release of AHA's Take On Me video and the opening of the first Blockbuster store. R.I.P. y'all. You'll have to read the blog post to get the specifics about that. So let's get on to my three top hits. You know those lesser known historical happenings that will be of interest to more than just those of us who remember when MTV had music? Ah, uh, the good old days. Yo MTV raps what? I digress. Top hit one is the CSS Hunley sinking on October 15th, 1863. CSS, you ask, and not USS? That's a lot of S's, sorry. That would be the Confederate. I've always been fascinated by the story of the Hunley because I have a personal connection. I was living in South Carolina right after it was raised in 2000. Spoiler, it sunk again. And there was even a replica that traveled across the state. You can now visit the Hunley and Museum in Charleston, and that is on my history nerd bucket list. More about the story, okay? So it sunk during a test mission and the entire crew was lost in front of a crowd of spectators. Then another crew, I don't get why these men would volunteer, they were put together and the Hunley was put to test in battle in 1864. It became the first submarine to sink a ship in battle when a torpedo struck the Union ship, the House Titanic. Unfortunately, the sub and its crew were one trick ponies as it sunk for its final time. Be shocked to see how small it is. Hard to imagine eight men fit inside. Yep, I'm a total Civil War nerd. Top hit two, also about the Civil War. Okay, after the book Uncle Tom's Cabin was published in 1853, more and more Northerners became abolitionists. Some people felt so strongly about this cause they took it to an extreme. That includes Ohio resident John Brown. Brown didn't believe in peaceful protests. He believed in revolutions and inciting violence. On Oxo uh, the on October 16th, 1859, Brown had planned to steal weapons from the arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Maryland and use the weapons to lead a slave revolt. Well, too many people found out about this plan and Confederate soldiers led by Jeb Stewart and Robert E. Lee surrounded Brown and posse, forcing them to surrender on the 17th. I've always felt strongly about incorporating art into social studies. There is an amazing mural of John Brown that I've always had students analyze. I have them do a quick write about what they see at first, and then we focus on the four quadrants because there's so much going on. We talk about what message the artist was trying to convey and the symbolism in the painting. Primary sources shouldn't just be photos. You can learn a lot about a time period from the art and music. As you know, John Brown was charged with treason for stealing weapons from a federal arsenal and executed. There's even a song about John Brown's body. Um, you may or may not want to go there. Now, on to top hit three. Let's go back a little farther in our time machine to the American Revolution for a double feature. Wednesday, October 17th, 1777 marks the Patriot victory in Saratoga, New York. This victory led to Benjamin Franklin making arrangements for the French to provide their support to the colonists. Almost four years later, on October 19, 1781, the Patriot victory at Yorktown forced British General Lord Cornwallis to admit defeat and surrender, which essentially led to the end of the American Revolution. Check out my Teachers Pay Teacher store, The Social Studies Whisperer, for picture dictionaries, web quests, vocabulary cards, and more for the Civil War and American Revolution. That's a lot of war, y'all. Folks, I like to tell my students history is in all flowers and rainbows, and this week is proof of that. 
It's also the week Southern Rock legend Leonard Skinner lost three of their bandmates in 1977. So on that depressing note, make sure and check out my blog posts because I included a few happy historical highlights, like the Red Scare hitting Hollywood. Okay, so this was a rough week in history. Make sure and join my Facebook group, Social Studies Salute, for extra support with social studies and community. I'll see you next week for Episode 9. Thank you so much for watching.